What's going on everybody in the Wilson Auto Detailing community on YouTube and on Instagram. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to set up your detailing business into a full-time income with part-time hours. If you're watching on the replay, on the Instagram story replay or on the YouTube replay, go ahead and skip forward to around minute like four or five because I'm gonna wait for some people to get on <clears throat> the stream. I'm gonna wait for some people to message me and make sure the audio and everything is okay. So if you're watching live, you can keep watching. If you're watching on the replay, skip forward just a little bit, a couple minutes. As you get on the stream on Instagram or on YouTube, please tell me where you're watching from. So tell me your name and tell me where you're watching from. And I'm going to take a sip of my green smoothie before we get started. What's up? Okay, Nate, what's up? Juan from Puerto Rico. Aaron, um, let's see here. Sam from California. Uh, let's see here. Mike Mazatlan. Oh no, oh my gosh. Mike Mazatlan. Ay, dígale, mis amigos de Mazatlan están mirando ahorita. Bienvenidos a todos. Um, let's see. Maryland, South Carolina, Virginia, Louisiana. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, Greece. Nairobi? Oh my gosh, Nairobi. What? Okay, let's see. Kansas, Pasco, Washington. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to give just a couple uh, more seconds, minutes maybe, for people to get on the live stream. If you're joining in, tell me where you're watching from. We're talking about how to set up your detailing business to uh, a full-time income with part-time hours. We're streaming live on YouTube. We're streaming live on the Instagram as well. So people in both communities can be a part of this. Okay. Sam Wilson is watching. She said, I look so familiar. That's because I'm your brother. Okay, so guys, let's go ahead and get into this. If you guys saw, there was a notification a little bit earlier today that we were going to be doing a live stream at this time today. It's not going to last more than an hour. It might not even last an hour. Honestly, I'm not sure. Normally with live streams, I have a bunch of notes. For this live stream, I have three main notes, but no, like, uh, I don't know, no kind of sub points below them, and that's because... I want this to be more than just kind of me uh, giving you guys, you know, maybe practical tips, but actually sharing with you guys how I set up my auto detailing business into a full-time income with part-time hours so that you guys can see how I did it and how you can tweak it a little bit for your own world, for wherever you live. So for example, yes, there is certain things that are very universal as far as this conversation is going to go that all of you can implement. However, there are certain things that will need to be tweaked. For example, you guys who live in California, your detailing world is a little bit different from mine here in Middle Tennessee. So just understand that. Um, some of you guys are asking questions in the live chat and um, I'm glad you are. I'm going to have a question and answer time at the end. So probably in about 30 minutes, I'm going to have a question and answer time, maybe after about 20 minutes and we're going to end with Q and A. So save your questions for the end because I will answer those live. <coughs> um, also, we have some of, of the Wilson Auto Detailing community from South America on the live stream. So Juan Catalina dice, tú hablas español muy bien, pues muchas gracias amigos de Sudamérica. Sí, probablemente la mayoría de este cosa va a ser en inglés, pero si tienes una pregunta en español, tú puedes preguntarme en español y yo voy a contestarte. So, now that we're in English and Spanish, let's go ahead and get into the content. So guys, we're talking about how to develop a detailing business that produces a full-time income with part-time hours. So let's 
talk about that. Number one, I'm assuming everybody in here already has a detailing business. So you need to understand that if you're on this live stream, I'm not going to tell you how to how to actually create a detailing business. We're only going to be talking about people who already have an established detailing business because the only way you can turn a business into a full-time income with part-time hours is if that business already exists, okay? So let's go ahead and get to the first point because remember, I only have three. So let's get to the first point. <clears throat> when you are starting in the detailing business, many people create, actually set up their business in the opposite way than what I'm talking about right now. What I mean is many detailers work full-time hours and make part-time income. Why is that? Because when you're starting in the detailing business, there's a fear that you're not good enough, you're charging too much, if you charge what you really want to charge, people won't actually take you as a uh, they won't, they won't want your business. They won't want to be your customer. Um, and so, um, let me actually turn my phone on. Let's see here. Here we go. Okay. I wanted to turn my phone on airplane mode. Sorry guys. Okay. So now my phone is on airplane mode, so I won't get interrupted by that. So, um, back to what I was talking about. Many detailers actually create a full-time our part-time income strategy without even realizing it. Why is that? And I know this is just going to be a small thing of what we're talking about, but we need to talk about what not to do before we talk about what to do. Why do they end up doing that? Well, because it's very easy to end up working full-time hours when you're in the detailing business because when you're in the detailing business, there's such like a level a lot of times of detailers of OCD that you end up spending nine hours, 10 hours on one single car, and then you charge, let's say, 120 bucks for the whole thing because you're a beginner, so you wanna stay on the less expensive side so you get more clientele because you're trying to create cash flow, which I understand, but if you're not careful, you will get stuck in a cycle of doing that, <clears throat> working eight hours on a car, making a hundred bucks, maybe a little over a hundred bucks. And let's just do the math. Let's say you were, you charge $120 for a 10 hour job, which I have done before back in my younger days of detailing. And I know I'm still a kid. Okay. But when I was even more a kid, I actually had that in particular happen to me. Actually, I charged a hundred dollars and it took me 10 hours. Not very hard to do the math. That would be $10 an hour. Let's say um, I make $12 an hour and charge $120. $12 an hour, $10 an hour, working 10 hour days outside in the sun, sweating my butt off. <laughs> That's trash. Why would I ever be in a business that pays that, that gives me that kind of rate of return for the amount of investment it's requiring on my part. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be in the Wilson Auto Detailing business if I was being paid that. So, only reason I bring that up is because many detailers have a tendency to do that exactly. And so we're going to talk about how to take that and flip it on its head and create full-time income with part-time hours. The first way we're talking about doing that is maintenance clients. One of the pitfalls that professional detailers run into is that they focus so heavily on getting new clientele that they let their current clientele slip through the cracks. It is a huge mistake. One of the things that I have personally done in my professional business, okay, is geared geared my detailing business towards acquiring as many maintenance clients as I possibly can. What is a maintenance client? Somebody whose car you detail on a regular basis. Why am I doing that? Let's break it down. If I see your car every four weeks, that means that your car has four weeks tops to get dirty again. That is not a long time. So 
I'm cutting down the time that I'm allowing a car to get dirty again, which means when I go back to see that car, the amount of time it's going to take me to detail is going to be dramatically less than the first time I serviced that car. But here's the catch. The money I'm making from that is not dramatically lower than the first time I serviced the car. What do I mean? Let's say the average maintenance detail takes me two hours. Why is that? Let's break it down real fast. I'm trying to get into detail here so you guys can get the perspective I'm talking about. A maintenance detail, there are some things that I have to do. There's some things I don't have to do. I'm going to have to do the windows pretty well. Windows get pretty dirty pretty fast, okay? I'm going to have to wash the outside of the paint, okay? Outside of the paint gets pretty dirty pretty fast. Am I going to have to clay bar it every time? Nope. Why would I do that? I'm seeing the car regularly. It doesn't require a clay bar every time. Am I going to have to uh, shampoo the carpets every time? No. Why would I do that? Why would I shampoo carpets I shampooed four weeks ago? And more, like, more often than not, your maintenance clients are not driving beater cars anyways. They're wanting to take care of it, so they're not letting it get very dirty in the first place. They're not toting around their kids and letting them eat in the car and all that sort of stuff. And even if they were, it's only four weeks of mess. It's much, a lot easier than four years. So I'm not shampooing the carpets every time. Am I doing the door jams? Yes. Are the door jams going to take me nearly as long? No. It takes a long time <coughs> to acquire, you know, to, to, for the door jams to acquire the dirt that they do. So if I just cleaned those door jams four weeks ago, why am I going to spend a bunch of time doing them now? Why would I spend a bunch of time cleaning the door panels? Four weeks later, are the door panels really going to be that dirty? Why would I spend a bunch of time uh, scrubbing the tires? I just degreased the tires four weeks ago and protected them. Am I going to have to spend the amount of time that I was before? No. Okay, so I'm being overdramatic, but you guys are getting the point I'm making. A maintenance detail, let's say it takes an average of two hours. Let's say a regular SUV you're starting in the detailing business. You've been doing it for a year, two years. Let's say a regular size SUV, you charge $245. Let's just put that number on it, $245. But your maintenance plan for that SUV is, let's say, $100 less. Let's just knock it down $100. $145 on a monthly basis for you to maintain that. Some of you guys are thinking, Luke, nobody here would pay that kind of money every month. You're wrong. There are people who will pay a monthly fee, a monthly charge, a monthly detailing price for you to come and maintain their vehicle. So every four weeks, you see it, $145, and it takes you two hours, okay? because you're not shampooing carpets, you're vacuuming, but there's not a lot to vacuum because you just saw it four weeks ago. You're cleaning everything, but there's very little required because you just saw the car. Two hours. That's very reasonable. This is not like, some of you guys are thinking, you know, is that really possible? Is that really possible? It's so possible. I mean, this is like, this is being conservative. I'm honestly, I'm being conservative with my numbers right now. $145. Two hours. $145. $145. Well, I'm not a mathematician, but that's over $50 an hour. Some of you guys are dying to make $50 an hour right now just doing regular detailing. Why wouldn't you be focusing on go- towards maintenance detailing where you can take dramatically less time, less effort, and get paid $50 an hour plus, you know, and then some. So $145, what is that? $72.50. Okay, right? Hundred forty. Yeah. So that's $72.50. Let's just round up. $73 an hour on an SUV. Now, I'm going to break out my pen and my notepad. $72 an hour. Let's, let's, let's be conservative. $72. let us round down. $72 an hour. Okay. Great. Let's say each maintenance detail takes you two hours, okay? Each one takes you two hours. Let's say you have three 
in a day. You have three SUVs, okay? Each one is 145. Takes you a total of six hours. What's 145 plus 145 plus 145? Well, let me write it out. 15, bam, uh-huh. 12, 13, bam. 435. $435. Can you guys see my incredible handwriting? $435 in six hours. Okay? Let me repeat that. Three maintenance details, all SUVs in one day. Each one takes you two hours because you're seeing them on a monthly basis. You're charging $145 each. You're making a total of $435 while working six hours. Now let's put a time crunch on it. You start at 8 a.m., six hours later, it's 2 p.m. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., you made $435 an hour, I mean, $435 total. You worked until two in the afternoon. You guys getting where I'm going with this? Okay, this is the way you need to start to think in your detailing business. This is the way I think about my detailing business. This is what I'm, this is what I'm shooting towards. I'm not, I, I have a lot of this kind of thing in my world, but I'm still shooting for more. Let's say you start at 7 a.m. because your clients trust you, so they just leave the keys out for you and you just go and start whenever. 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. is still a total of six hours, okay? You're done at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. You made $435. There are people who work 7 to 5 and don't make that during the day. Teachers work from 7 to like 5.30 and they don't make that, okay? So this is all about the money in this video, okay? So it's not that the world is all about the money, but in this video, this is the money video. This is the part-time hours, full-time income, okay? You have to understand in the detailing world what to charge for the services and the value you're bringing to the table. There has to be an understanding of that in order to get to these numbers. So in about six minutes, I just shared with you guys one strategy right there. These, this is the reason why this is the reason why maintenance clients are so essential and why you must push for maintenance clients in your auto detailing world because it is going to contribute to this thing that I keep saying, full-time income, part-time hours. You don't want the other way around, full-time hours, part-time income. If you're not careful, you can set it up that way. You don't want that, okay? Now I'm going to do one more example and then we're going to move on. So I'm going to flip the page. Let's make it a little bit, uh, let's be a little bit more conservative this time, okay? Let's say they're not SUVs. Let's say they're small sports cars, okay? Small little sports cars. Each one, it's two-door. They might not even have a back seat. If they do, it's so small, it doesn't even, it's just negligible, okay? Each sports car, you see it every, let's say, six to seven weeks, okay? Six to seven weeks and you charge $100 even, okay? The car is so small, it takes you no time in the first place. But not only is the car so small in this case, you see it every six to seven weeks, and it's a small sports car, so it's not a kid's car, it's not a family hauler. So now, not only is it incredibly small, now it's incredibly clean. Because number one, the guy who drives it, the girl who drives it, keeps it clean because they care about their sports car. But number two, you see it every six to eight weeks. You don't need to see it every four weeks. You see it every six to eight. Let's just be conservative. Every six to seven to eight weeks, you charge $100 even. I think that's a conservative number. I think that's a conservative number for six to eight weeks, okay? But let's just keep it conservative. $100 per sports car, okay? $100. You got your name inside of a nice neighborhood, a gated community, people who have a high disposable income, okay? Let's just say you have four of these little Porsches, little Ferraris, Maserati, I don't know, we'll be a little bit lesser with it, a BMW, Mercedes, little tiny, a BMW i-series, whatever, okay? 
$100 each every six to eight weeks. You see four of them. They only take you at most an hour. If it's taking you more than an hour, we have a different conversation. At most, it's taking you an hour. You're not having to degrease the leather. You're not having to degrease anything, clean up stains. You're just having to tr almost treat everything with a protective conditioner, basically, again. That's basically what that maintenance detail boils down to. It's very little cleaning. So let's say $100. Four of them, each one takes you an hour. I'm going to write this out just so we can see it in a very visual sense, okay? $400 total. Each car is $100. $400 total. What was the time on that? An hour each? Four hours. Okay. Four hours total, $400. Now, let's get back to my full-time income, part-time hours. Rewind. Let's say you start at 8 a.m. When does that put you finishing four hours later? 12 p.m. 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. $400. Now, let's look at this in a different sense. If you made $400 in four hours, that means you made $100 an hour. Now, here's what's amazing about this. You're making $100 an hour for working less hard than you would on a minivan that's been trashed, and you're making probably more money than you would on that minivan. Working less hours, working less hard, making more money. You guys are getting this, okay? You see how this is possible. So I'm just running numbers right now. This is possible. Let's go ahead and go to point two. Here we go. Point two, specialty detailing. What do I mean by specialty detailing? Specialty detailing, I mean, is rather than just the average detailing that we're used to, cleaning, carpet shampooing, uh, degreasing leather, conditioning leather, washing, waxing, all of those things are great. But specialty detailing is when you begin to branch out into other things that are under the detailing umbrella that might not necessarily be cleaning. It might be engine detailing, headlight restoration, scratch removal, polishing, two-stage polishing, uh, paint, chip, rock, whatever, repair, okay? Touch-up paint, all right? Um, what else am I thinking? Um, black trim restoration. Okay, all of these things. So I just named you guys a ton of stuff. How about this one? Vomit cleanup. That's specialty detailing. You can optimize your website for things like that. Vomit cleanup. That's awesome. I actually don't do that anymore because I just got so, it's so disgusting. But with specialty detailing, what it allows you to do is increase... I'm going to draw a little graph here. Increase the amount of money you're charging and decrease the time you're spending. Okay? Increase the money to accomplish the job. Decrease the amount of time, of time it takes to perform the job. Okay? Headlight restoration is very straightforward. It's, it's fairly easy to do. However, I'm going to show you guys something that you probably already know. And we're going to make a graph, actually, okay? Let me think about this real fast. Let's see. All right. Money. How much people know. All right, watch this, guys. This is gold. This is gold, okay? Here we go. This, I don't know how much you guys know about math, but this is a negative slope, okay? The reason this graph has a negative slope is because this is a graph of how much people know versus how much money you can make, okay? Let me explain. 
the less a person knows about a particular process, the more money you can make performing the process. This graph also works if the uh, y-axis is instead of how much people know, it's how much people want to do the job. The less one wants to do a job, the more money you can make doing that job, okay? Let me explain. If my customer doesn't know how to do headlight restoration, he knows little about it, I begin to have an opportunity to charge more because he doesn't have the value I have in order to accomplish the thing he wants accomplished, okay? This is why doctors make a lot of money. I don't know how to treat this person's sickness, but there are a select few people who do. Those people who do know how to treat the sickness get paid a lot of money because there's fewer people who know how to do their job, okay? So the more you begin to branch out into specialty services, the more you can charge because the less people know how to do it or the less people know, less people know how to do it well, okay? So there's a reason why you pay someone in particular to do something you care about more because they do a better job okay, most of the time. So the more you understand how to do, the more valuable you become. The graph, honestly, this graph can be flipped, okay? The more you know, the more you know, the more you get paid. So you can just flip this graph over and it works the same exact way. The more a person knows, the more valuable they become and therefore the more money they make, okay? Let's go ahead and go to the third point here. I don't actually remember what it was. I love making graphs. Graphs are so visual, okay? And it helps people learn. It's actually a proven, it there's been a lot of statistics that show that when teachers draw out things that they're talking about, students retain a lot more of the information. Totally beside the point. Here we go. Here's the very last thing. The reason I saved this for last is because it's the most difficult for people to do. Very last thing before we go to Q&A. The last thing you can do to turn your business into a full-time income with part-time hours, and this might be more correctly stated as the last thing you can do to turn your business into a full-time income is raise your prices, okay? As you go in the auto detailing world and you're detailing more, you're acquiring more customers, you're doing more of this stuff, eventually you're going to want to raise your prices. And you're probably going to want to raise your prices more than once, okay? So you'll probably raise your prices incrementally as you go. One of the questions people ask is, Luke, how do I keep my customers on my team and raise my prices at the same time? And the answer has always been the same for me. If your customer knows the value they're getting from you, they will stay on your team even when you raise your prices, okay? Raising your prices is an inevitable thing that you're going to have to do eventually. This is a, this is, this is just capitalism. Like, you will have to raise your prices eventually if you want to continue. Here is the strategy I would implement. Here's the number one strategy as far as raising your prices is, is concerned. Before you raise your prices, I'm going to make another graph. Before you raise your prices, your number one sole focus needs to be getting more customers. If you can get more customers, you can raise your prices. This slope is positive. This is a positive slope graph, okay? As you guys can see. The more customers, you guys can see, on the y-axis we have customers, we have x-axis we have money. Customers, money. The more customers you can acquire, the more money you can make. Why is that? Because when you have an excess customer basis, you no longer have to keep a competitive price because there's so many people to choose from to do business with 
that in that barrel of people, there are inevitably going to be some who want to pay the higher price because they understand the value that comes with it. There will inevitably be people in there with a healthier disposable income than others who want to pay the higher price and or who are not even worried about the price in the first place. So you can charge whatever you like because money is not their issue. Okay. The more customers you can get, the more money you make, not because you're detailing more cars. So let me be clear. This is not a graph of getting more customers to detail more cars. This is a graph of getting more customers to decide on the best customer to do business with, okay? So this is just some basic economic stuff as far as the United States is concerned, okay? If you live outside of the United States, it's not always the same as this. However, capitalism, this will help you. So, I hope that makes sense. Let me recap very quickly. First strategy, target a target maintenance clients. Figure out a process that helps you get maintenance clients. Number two, get involved in specialty detailing because the more valuable you become, the more, the more you know how to do, the more money you can make because you became more valuable. Number three, raise your prices, okay? All of these strategies, when implemented the right way, the ways that I touched on in this live stream, will turn your business into a full-time income with part-time hours. Auto detailing is a more or less specialty service. And with specialty services, people who do them very well get compensated very well, okay? So, there's a reason why it's expensive to get your car painted or designed certain ways. Car, car paint services tend to be expensive. Why? Because there's not a lot of people who are good at doing it. So when you become good at doing something specialized like that, you begin to make more money naturally, okay? With all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and take questions. So on Instagram Live and on YouTube Live, go ahead and send in your questions on the live stream, on the live chat, and I will answer them. I'll go ahead and pick some that have already come out. Let's see here. Um, let's see. We'll start with Aaron said, on average, how many customers do you get per day? Let me put it like this. I get a lot of calls, so potential customers per day. But because of my price point, I weed out a lot of customers per day. So um, that is one thing I've done. Because I have so many customers, I have raised my prices knowing that I bring a certain value to the table and that weeds out a lot of those calls pretty much instantly. Um, Prestige Mobile Auto Detailing, have you ever considered business insurance, like if you killed a battery or damaged something? Business insurance is a good idea for some of you guys. I think what you have to weigh is the cost of that. If the business insurance is something that's negligible cost-wise in your world, do it. However, Let's say you've been in business for 10 years and you've never damaged anything and the way your business is set up, you don't really, you have a very low risk. You know, detailing can be very low risk. And so you have to measure, is the insurance I'm paying every month, is it worth it based on the risk that I'm taking? In my opinion, in a lot of ways, the answer is no, but everybody's different. So uh, let's see. What if, let's take one from Instagram Live. What if your maintenance client gets a couple stains on their seat or carpet? Would you charge your regular maintenance price or charge extra? That's a good question. The answer to that is it depends. Let's assume this maintenance client has been with you for the past five years. If it's something small, I would probably just take care of it on my own out of gratitude and an attempt to keep that customer loyal to me because it does represent a sort of job security that I like. However, let's say you know your customer has waited eight weeks instead of four weeks. Yes, I would charge extra. And 99% of the time, that customer is going to understand that. If they don't, you know, I kind of question whether or not to be in business with them in the first place. Um, what is your number one marketing tip other than social media? 
I don't have one because social media is okay. That's not true. I do have one, but don't ask questions like that. Not at trying to be mean, but social media is the best marketing that exists today. And so there's, you shouldn't be avoiding it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay. What I would say, let's say if you don't do social media and you just want to run away from it, which if you do that, your business will die. But if you want to do that, I guess my next best thing would be very literally printing off flyers and knocking on people's doors so that they can put a face with a name and explaining to them who you are very quickly and moving on. Okay, Kamari asked a good question. Can you explain your process of how you get jobs done in under an hour? It just took me three hours to do an interior detail for $60. How can I improve my timing? Okay, so that's $20 an hour, which is not bad for someone who's starting. $20 an hour is a, is a pretty good, you know, income as far as incomes go nationwide. Um, how do you get it done in under an hour? Well, it depends. If it's a maintenance client and I see it regularly, I could definitely get it done in under an hour. Number one, my experience helps me in that area because I've done, I've just detailed so many hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, but thousands of cars. So that helps. But two, um, if it's a really dirty vehicle, it's not going to get done in under an hour. So it's, it's a case by case basis. Um, Let's see here. Let's go to Instagram Live here and see if we can get a question. Uh, let's see. What would we offer in a maintenance detail? I think that's a good question that I wanted to bring up anyways. What should you offer in a maintenance detail? Well, let's, let's break that down. What do you need to offer? Making sure everything's dusted off. But you're not having to seriously scrub anything. You're not having to seriously remove grease and grime. So you're just basically dusting all the hard surfaces, uh, quickly cleaning leather, maybe uh, vacuuming, maybe quickly cleaning door jams. And then after that on the interior, quickly protecting everything. And the truth is, in some maintenance details, protecting and cleaning may be one step. Outside, as far as exterior maintenance details goes, a quick wash, a quick wax, making sure you're dressing tires, making sure you're dressing wheel wells. Outside of that, what would you need to do? A quick bug detail? That would take very little time because you just saw the car and you just waxed the car, so the bugs that are on there should come off fairly easily anyways. Um, yeah. Okay, Callus Auto Detailing asked a question that I'd like to address. How do you handle people who want to haggle on price? This is such a good question because you will always have people who want to haggle on price. Here's how I deal with those people. You do not have to adopt this strategy, but here's how I here's here's what I do. I don't budge. I have a pretty serious philosophy in at least my my business. I do not lower prices for anyone. And it's not like a you know, a rude thing, but I, I'm not, number one, I have way too much business to lower prices. So if someone wants to haggle on price, I'll just say you need to go somewhere else because there's a, the next guy in line doesn't want to haggle on price. So once again, supply and demand. But number two, when you lower your prices, people talk, okay? I've, been there, done that. People talk, and then you all of a sudden begin to get calls and text messages saying, hey Luke, my friend said that you did their car for 50 bucks, and I thought that was such a great deal. Was wondering if I could get something like that. And I don't want that to happen. So I do not lower prices for anyone. I'll tell you a quick story. I lowered my prices for one woman in particular two years ago. And I was kind of in this mindset of, okay, I'll show her the kind of job I do, and then the next time she'll pay me full price because that's the kind of things people think. So I said, I'm going to charge you $100 for what you want. And she said, that's way too expensive. And I said, okay, I'll do it half off just to show you the value. I did it for $50. It took me something crazy amount of time. Next time she called me, she said, can I get it again? And I said, yep, it'll be this much. And she said, but you did it for 50 last time. 
And I said, yes, I did it half off for you because I wanted to show you the value that I bring. And she said, I would never pay your prices for a detail. So that taught me pretty quickly, I don't give deals. I do not give deals. I do not give deals. I do not worry about people who are, when people try to haggle, I very instant, like quickly just say, it sounds like I'm not the guy for you. You should probably look elsewhere. Here's a guy who does it about that, that, that price. And the truth is when you react that way, a lot of times people try to hold on to you more because they don't, they have like a fear of losing. Um, let's see, I'm going to do one more question here. Um, well, two, Pedro Sanchez says, anything you can recommend for faded trim? Yes, Pedro, check out my video on a product called Solution Finish. Jimmy Roo says, uh, if I just want to maintain cars, should I stay away from black paint? Um, that's actually a good question, Jimmy Roo. Okay, uh, if you want to maintain vehicles and that's all you want to do, should you just totally avoid black painted cars? I don't think so, but with black paint comes a greater level of communication that you as the detailer have to have between you and your customer. You have to communicate greater, more in depth, more detailed than you would have with white paint because it's just the nature of the beast. Because you're going to see way more imperfections in black paint, you're going to have to explain what those are to your customer in order for them not to be upset with you and feel like somehow you're the reason that, that those things are there because that does happen and that's very real. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop Instagram live, YouTube live. Thank you guys for being on. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel or not following me on Instagram, definitely follow me. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because I came out with videos all the time just like this on products, tools, strategies, communication skills, business skills, and so much more all in an effort to help the pro detailers become more successful and profitable in their businesses. And on this channel, I share the same strategies that turn my business into a full-time income with part-time hours. So if that interests you, definitely consider following and subscribing. Love you guys. If you had a question that didn't get answered, comment below the video after it gets posted. Keep working hard, and I will see you guys in the next video.